Hello, everybody, and happy Wednesday. <laughs> it is Wednesday, and welcome back to another fun class here with Faber Castell USA and Michael Stores. My name is Label Ralston, and I'd like to thank everyone for being here today. It's a lovely afternoon. I am so happy that you all are all here today because we are going to first time share the Enchanted Forest kit with everyone. Now, I know that you will have some questions regarding the release date and when is it going to be available at Michael's stores. Um, the only thing that I know right now is that they should have this very, very soon. Uh, they will have it online and also they will have these kits and select Michael store. So I would check my local Michaels and, you know, check maybe it's there already. So this is the Faber-Castell Enchanted Forest Kit. This is super exciting. Last week we looked, um, we looked at the Kauai world and today we're going to use and look at the Enchanted Forest. Now I have provided you with one of the pages that you can find inside the book because it isn't available at Michael's yet. Um, Faber Castell was very generous enough to say you can use one of the um, image that we have in the book so they can print it and use it at home. So inside the kit, you will find six different colors of gold Faber pencils. You will get a fine liner, an eraser, a sharpener, eraser sharpener, and also an HB pencil. It also comes with two fun stickers. So you'll see all the cute stickers in here that's included in this kit as well. All right, and so there's like 100 and page, 100 pages of coloring and activity book inside this kit. A lot, a lot, a lot. Um, it is one of my most favorite kits. I created four kits for Faber-Castell and the next two upcoming weeks, we're going to look into the rest of the two kits, okay? And so I am just gonna go grab the pencils that are included in this kit so we can look at them. And of course it's Enchanted Forest. So you're going to see a lot of cute critters. You're going to see a lot of foliage we're talking about that I'm asking about the correct pronunciation English is my second language so I want to make sure that I'm pronouncing that correctly so this is a kit let's look at the colors first shall we okay so we have two different types of green you have a light green which is the 170 you have a darker green which is the 167 we have the yellow the 107 you have a beautiful warm brown this is 187. You have a red 121 because there's going to be a lot of cute mushrooms in here. Hello there. And then we have a blue, which is 143. Now the gold Faber pencils, they are very, very blendable. So for example, um, you want to create a much lighter green. So what you can do is use the light green 170 and use the 107 to blend your colors and create an even lighter green, right? Or you can start with a 107, layer that and add a little bit of that 170 to create a different shade of green. So you can blend your colors. It's, it's going to be fun. So six colors in there. Then you have the fine liner and you have the pencil. So let's look at the book real quick. I'm super excited because there are so many cute images in this kit. You'll find the table of contents and then you'll find some information about the gold Faber pencils in here, about the Faber Castell supplies. Oh, thank you so much, Sharon. <laughs> you guys are so sweet. All right. And then here comes the fun part. <laughs> you get so many coloring pages. All right. Mm, I'm so excited. All right. So you start with actually with the Kawaii World. I'm not sure if we can. Okay. I have one here. In the Kawaii World kit, which we looked at last week, you get a coloring page and then you get a doodling page on that page on the bottom part. There you go, you can zoom it out. So this is our Kawaii world and this is the Enchanted Forest kit side by side, right? So this is the Kawaii world, you have a coloring page and then you have step-by-step -step doodling activities in there. But the Enchanted Forest, you'll find many different coloring pages. We're just gonna slowly flip through them so you guys can see it. I love it. Look at the wonderful world, the enchanted world. 
Look at this little fairy. It's having its Sunday. So you'll find a lot of gnomes, a lot of fairies in here, mushrooms, a lot of critters, animals, a little cute hedgehog. It's just bunnies. I mean, I had so much fun creating this, this kit. There's four. And I think the Kauai world and the Enchanted Forest, of course, uh, are the only ones that has a lot of coloring pages. So there was a lot of artwork. And while I was drawing them, I felt like a little kid, honestly. And that was my, that's my hope. You know, with Faber Castell and I, when we talked about the kids, we talked about very easy, very simple, that everyone will be inspired to pick it up and start drawing, whether you're, you know, it's for your children, for gifts, or for the young at hearts, like, you know, some of us here, um, this is, it's perfect. You can also um, use this for a bonding with your kids, grandkids. It's, it's perfect with your sisters, brothers. So this, I started coloring it. As you can see, some pages will have the coloring, lots of mushrooms in here. Okay. So, and then also for the drawing activities, there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. All right. So for the drawing activities, this is where the Kauai world and the Enchanted Forest is different. So some parts of here, you'll find like a broken line. So connect the dots or connect the lines to draw your images. If you know you're like someone, oh, that's so hard. I don't think I can come up with anything. Then you have simple activities like that. And then you have one where you can create your own hairstyle if you'd like. Uh, you can finish in your the wings of the fairy. And then this one, I did this for social media for a video. I created a world inside the terrarium, <laughs> a bunny. And I think this is the same terrarium that we're going to do today. So I created the bunny and there's some little froggy in here. And then you will also get blank pages in here where you can practice your drawings. You also get some, some of these, some step-by-step, -step, and then you get blank pages in here. So you can use it as a journal and a sketchbook as well. All right. So I'm going to look at the chat section before we get started. So I make sure I don't miss any of your questions. What inspired you to create these kits? My, my, my first inspiration was I wanted to share my journey. I wanted to share my, my journey as an artist because when I started, I was not an artist. I mean, I was a singer, but it was a different artist. I didn't know how to draw. And this was 10, 11 years ago. And so what I wanted was to create a product for, again, children, adults, young adults, young at hearts, that really want to add more creativity in their lives. And, and that was my goal was to something for them to be inspired and say, I can do that too. If she did that, then I can too. That was the very main goal that I had was to, I wanted to be light. I wanted to be fun. I wanted to be easy and also very whimsical and magical. It's like, I want you to make your inner child really um, be inspired and said, I want to do that. I want to do that. So th that was the goal. It, it's cheesy, but that's really is, that's the honest truth. That is. All right. And so Lakita said, congratulations, Layers. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so excited for these. Patricia said, Catherine, this looks so cute. I'm excited. All right, Mary. Hi, Mary. Happy Wednesday. Thank you so very much. Yes, I do have an Instagram. Um, you'll find, you know, me using the kit. So if you want more inspiration, but also you can find a lot of inspiration at FaberCastell.com as well. So you'll find um, some inspiration, how to use the kit, some coloring ideas, and also the doodle step-by-step. -step. We'll do a lot of those at FaberCastell.com. Can I use a notebook? Absolutely, you can. If you don't, if you don't want to use your kits for the step-by-step -step guideline, you can use a separate sketchbook. You know, that's always smart to do that. Um, yeah, I would, I would highly suggest having a sketchbook alongside the kits as well. So you have like a separate um sketchbook that you can really see your progress. We talked about this. We talk about this a lot in this class, you know, that we do. It's important to have your sketchbook so you can just really see and track your progress and not compare it to so-and-so that are sharing their progress online. Again, you just don't know where 
what page they are in this journey. Maybe they're in the 167 page and you just, you're just getting started and you're only in your third page, right? So it's important to track your own progress, compare yourself to yourself. So you can really see that, oh my gosh, I am improving or I can do much better than this. But all in all, all you got to do is give yourself grace because it doesn't happen overnight. It will not happen overnight. So it took me 11 years before I was finally, maybe it took me three years where I was really confident. I can say, you know what? I, I think I, I think I'm doing it, you know, but um, you got to fake it till you make it. You, it's, it's about confidence. It's about also, it's about the process. It's about the enjoying it because if you're not enjoying it, if it's making you feel uninspired, if it's making you feel really overwhelmed and not having fun, don't do it. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, just don't do it. If it's just bringing you down instead of lifting you up, we're doing this, we're adding creativity in our lives so that it will lift us up. All right. And not the opposite. Okay. How about Facebook? I, I use the same um, account name, a mommy lay everywhere. Okay. So, all right. No, Anaya, you're not late. We're just getting started. Okay. Here we go. So again, if you printed one of the, the page that I shared, that's what we're going to use. If you have, do you have an activity book? Do you have like a um, watercolor or a mixed media paper that you can use also? I love using like a mixed media paper rather than a smooth copy paper. But if your copy paper is not overly smooth, then it's perfect. Don't change it. If you printed it in a not super smooth paper, the thing is my copy paper here in the office, it's a little smooth because I use it a lot for lettering. So I don't really like it when it comes to coloring. Does that make sense? So I want something with grip. I want something with tooth. So if you have a mixed media paper or even a watercolor paper, a hot press or a cold press, grab that for me, please. All right. So if you printed it, okay, so here's an option. If you already printed it, and you feel like, you know what, I'm just going to do it right here. Um, this is just a practice and all that. So you've, because you can print it again. Does that make sense? So once you download it, you can print it again. But to me, I want to transfer this image into my um, hot press watercolor paper. If you have a mixed media paper, that works as well. All right. So we always do this. If you don't have a tracing paper, grab a pencil. And what you want to do is you'd want to cover the whole image. So I don't have a carbon paper or tracing paper or transfer paper, I should say a graphite sheet. This is what we're going to do is we're going to create our own DIY graphite sheet. So I can see it against the light if I am covering all the image. How's everybody? I hope you're all doing well. Summer is going too fast. Too fast, actually. So I'm just adding in some areas to make sure that I cover the whole thing. I'm using a jumbo pencil for this too. This is from Faber-Castell. It's much easier to cover a larger space. And also it's easy for my grip because I'm getting older and sometimes my, my hands are cramping and it just doesn't feel good. All right, I think that's good enough. All right, so this time you wanna center the image. You don't wanna move it too much because you all you have your graphite, your pencil in there. So you don't wanna move it too much once it's, like that, so you wanna keep it together. If you have a paper clip, you know, so to avoid it from moving around, that's a good idea. I have these cute paper clips in here. If you want, you can just hold them together, hold them in place like this. If you don't have a paper clip, it's okay. You just hold them in place. If you have maybe a washi tape, you know, something that's not so tacky, a tape like that, you can hold them in place as well using those, right? So I think they're good. 
Now I'm going to use a pencil, just a regular pencil, and I'm going to go over the same the sketch that I have in here. All right. So again, if you want to use the printable just as is, you can wait for us until we finish with our sketch in here. Right. So I'm just going over all of these, like I'm actually drawing it. Now, if you want to use this printable as is, then you can start tracing over the image. As you notice, it's lighter so that you can trace over it, use your favorite marker. Um, so if you have whichever fine liner that you would like to use, you can start doing that now if you'd like. So it will give um, you will have enough time for the ink to dry. I'm just going to work a little faster. So I won't take so much time. There you go. Now, if you didn't print the handout, we might have some issue, but if you, <laughs> if you can see the drawing in here, you might wanna start copying it. If you want to not create so much greeneries and leaves, then you can skip that and just draw a terrarium. So it's just a bottle with a cork on top. Also, I am going to use the gold Faber pencils to color in my image today. I'm going to start with this. I'm going to use my... See, I'm already cramping with my pencil. So I'm just gonna use my jumbo pencil as well. So, all right, so here, if you don't have the handout, I want you to follow the step-by-step -step how I'm going to draw the terrarium. Does that make sense? I'm gonna zoom it in again. All right, so basically I started with kind of like a smile like this. And then we're gonna make a diagonal or a slanted line, parallel. And then we're gonna copy that smile again. Right? And then we're gonna close it in. This is like an oval shape. Okay. Now below it, below this one smile, we're gonna go create another smile wider and bigger like that and then we're going to close in the sides by drawing a curved line so this one is kind of like a letter c and this one i always say a belly of the d <laughs> so just like that So for the bottle, we're going to create a bottle shape. It's going to be much wider. We have just a very small opening here. So if you want like a, remember we created the diagonal line there on top. So we're, it's almost like that, but make it curve a little bit, right? So just curve it a little bit. So two of those. Now bring it down. It's almost like a letter C2, but not too stretched. Just like that. And then I'll bring this down also. So I'm just gonna copy that same shape that I created onto the left. Now, again, when we're drawing, we don't aim for perfection because perfection is overrated. It truly is, especially when we're drawing whimsical images like this. The more imperfect it is, this is my personal opinion. Now, if someone can you know, disagree with me and it's okay. To me, when you're drawing something whimsical, I think 
when it's imperfect, it really does add character to, you know, your drawings. Now we're going to skip the world inside. We're going to keep the bottle in there first. We're going to add more leaves over here at the bottom. We're just framing the world. That's what we're doing. We're just adding more visual interest in here. Okay. Look at how I created this bush. There's like one straight line. There's a little heart on top. And then I bring it down by creating leaf shape. Just like that. I always start with the stalk or the branch of my leaves. It's my, it's the direction. So when I have the direction where it's heading, I follow and add leaves. My first guide is always the center. And it tells me the direction where the leaves are going like this. And then when you're trying to draw many different leaves, what you want to do is just make different type of shapes. You know, you can make this like very oval or maybe little tiny ones, big ones. So play around with shapes, play around with sizes and all that. Now I'm going to go lift this one. If you don't have a paper clip, be careful so that you want to make sure that it's still the same. This is what it looks like. It's very light, but it's almost like a traced in image, right? So I'm going to keep the middle part empty because I want us to sketch that together. Okay, so I'm gonna lift this one. I'm good. I have the bottle. I think that's the hardest part to create anyways. So we're good with that. Now we're gonna decorate this middle part. This is our world. This is our enchanted world inside. So we wanna create first our main subject. Now it's important to use a pencil for this. Okay, I'm gonna grab my HB pencil. That's pointier. Oops. And then we're gonna grab some eraser, excuse me for a second. I thought I did have my eraser here. Okay. Now I am going to create a bunny inside. Now let's look at the sample again, what we have in here. So you have an idea. Let me find it in the kit this little bunny here, right? So in this one, I have a bunny, I have a mushroom, I have a sun inside the terrarium, I have some mushrooms in here and different layers of bushes, you know, some grass, some little kind of like eucalyptus, some leaves. So that's what we wanna do. We wanna fill the bottle inside um, a cute world. So choose your critter. What would you like? You want a bunny? You want, maybe we can do something where there two of them are together inside, or maybe just one. Um, I want you to use your imagination. <laughs> this, this is the fun part. It's like using your own imagination. I know it's fun and also kind of overwhelming sometimes when you don't have it. But when you and I are here together, we will come up with something great. Okay, how about let's start with a very simple one. How about let's add some pattern inside the cork. I'm just going to add some imperfect circles in here just to kind of add some pattern, just to break the eyes and not be afraid of the white page. However, it's not even white anymore. I'll add, follow the same smile shape that we created. And I'm adding some broken lines. Broken lines make it look more whimsical and imperfect. And I really like that look. Just like that. Don't try to make it look clean and super perfect. Just easy on it. All right. I feel like in here, as you can see, one of my sketch is a little more rounder on the right. So I want to fix that. I'm going to bring this down and then just round it at the bottom. It doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. I just want it to be close to 
close to this, the left side because this one was too rounded. Now it's too square. I don't want it too square either. So we want it just slightly rounded down there. All right. Now for my bunnies, when I'm drawing animals and kawaii, it's very simple. I use the basic shapes. I know you, you will hear me say this over and over again, but it really is. So I hope you don't get tired of that because we're gonna use basic shapes to create our animal, All right? So I'm gonna put this in here so you can have a little bit of an idea. A bunny, a bunny. <laughs> okay, perfect. We're gonna draw some bunny. Do you guys know a little um, info here? I, my youngest daughter, I call her my bunny. So the bunny that I created, the character that I created, I call her Bay because my daughter's name is Rain and her nickname is Bay. So she's Bay. And I draw Bay many different styles sometimes. She has a bit more rounded face. Sometimes she has more oval face. But to me, she's Bay. When I'm drawing a bunny, that's it. Okay. So I'm going to start with an oval. Almost like really not oval. Because when you look at the oval, you think about, I'm going to grab some paper in here. Paper, lay. Paper here. So when you think oval, this is what you're seeing, right? Like this one. So when you say circle, this is what you have in your head, like a perfect circle. Now for my bunny, what I really want here is close, because you can have this one as a vertical oval, then you can make it also like more horizontal, more wider stretched oval, right? So think of it this way. The face that we're going to use, the shape that we're going to use to create our bunny is almost like this stretched oval, wider, but close to a circle. I know it's like, huh? Okay, so let's, how about we try that? How about we start with a circle so we can really see? I'm going to start with a circle face over the circle shape, right? Just circle. You don't have to make it perfect, but just the most circle that you can make like that. Now, what I would like for you to do is lighten your sketch a little bit. Oops, we're going to go make it darker so you guys can see the sketch. So the bottom part of the circle, if you divide it in two, I want to erase that bottom part. So now I'm left with a half circle. Okay. So this is the top part of my bunny. Now I want to stretch the cheeks. I want to create like a chubby cheek, okay? To make that, the half where you erased it. So we're going to go bring it down. We're going to create like almost like letter C, but not, don't think of it as a letter C, C, okay? So when you think of a letter C, you're going to make this way, okay? But what I want for my face is look how tiny that is. So it's almost just like following the shape of the C, but it's not really entirely gonna look like a letter C. Hey Lei, it's a little bit hard to see um, the, the doodle a little bit. It's a little light. Yeah, it's gonna be really light because we're sketching, but I'm gonna try hard to darken it a little bit so you can see it more. Here we go. Is that much better? Yes, looks good to me. All right. Okay. And then we're going to copy the same shape, but this one instead of a C, that belly of a D. All right. So now you have two chubby cheeks in there. And then we're just going to connect them almost making a very wide smile, just like that. I'm going to go darken it so you guys can see. Just like that. Now, when you want to create your own character, for example, this is where you want to be, to use your imagination. You can make your bunny ears as big as you would like but I want I want you to think about when you do that 
when you're trying to create your own character, I want you to think of symmetry as well. Even though with cartoons and, you know, trying to make your own cartoonish characters, you can do whatever. If you want it to super droopy up to um, its feet, you can do that. Um, but I would like you to make different variation so that you can really choose, oh, you know what? I really like it when it's not so um, big or I like it when it's not too narrow or too long. Um, so play around. Maybe, you know, if you're doing this as an exercise, maybe you can create different heads sometimes, you know, when you're trying to practice. I would love for you to create different heads of the bunny and then play around with each face or each head that you create. Now I want you to play around with the bunny ears and the nose and the mouth. Then this is how you create your own character because you're going to distinguish which style represents you the most or which is the, which one is the one that really speaks to you and say, oh, this is my character. Now this is the one I want. Okay. So from my bunny ear for Bay, I have been drawing her and I have been changing her. And like when I said, um, every time. So I think I'm going to keep it simple this time and really draw a bunny ear. So it's narrow and then white on top. So it goes up and then down like that. Okay. I'm gonna draw just another one so we can see and play around with variation. You can also go like this, where it's almost pointing to the left or the right, whichever you would like. So like that. So it's like, it's more flowy. Or you can go, I'm going to go make another head. Like that. Or probably it's not so big. It's more squarish. Sometimes you make it where it's more round, like this one. So that's why when you're sketching, it is important to sketch very light so that it's easier to erase it. Now, for your character, you can always add um, different patterns inside. You know, it doesn't have to be like a regular bunny. Maybe you can add like stripes like this. Maybe you can double that same shape that you created and follow around. Add that inside part of the ear. You can shade it or you can use that later. You can do that later when you're coloring. Now it's time for the face, okay? I love small, tiny faces when I am creating my characters. So you find it very simple, two dots and a smile. Sometimes it's like this where it's almost like squinting, like mm, super happy. Or you will also see somewhere it's like very calm like this. I rarely create characters that are angry. They're always happy. I love happy characters. So you play around with your eyes. Now, this is another tricky part of when you're creating a character, placement of the face, because it's going to make a very big difference. Okay. So for example, I'm going to show you, we're going to go three different exercises for the bunny face. I'm going to make a very big eyes. So I'm, this is an oval shape, All right? And inside that oval shape, we're going to create another one that are that is smaller. Inside like that. And then we're going to create a third one. And inside the third one, I'm going to shade it in, not completely. I'm going to create like a white, we're going to create a white part inside. So you can draw like a circle to know which part you're not gonna shade in, but that's it. So you have three different 
oval shapes. Now for the nose, I want to make this nose like a wide oval like this. And then straight like that. And then we're going to create like a letter U or smile, two of those, one to the left, one to the right side of that straight line. Okay. And then you can draw a big one tooth like that. So that's one face, right? Now I want to show you a kawaii face. And I want to show you a, um, a sample of this one too. I'm going to create two dots. Like, look how tiny these dots. I want you to also pay attention to the distance of the eyes from one another. Okay. So they're not close together, but they have a very good distance in the middle. I'm going to draw that square so you can see um, pl um, a plus or a cross. So you guys can see that distance, right? In the middle of the nose, I'm going to draw a smaller. No, in the middle of the two eyes, I'm going to draw a little small oval for the nose, right? And then I'm just going to draw a line down there. I'm not going to draw a mouth. I'm just going to keep it like that. I want you to see the difference because this is important. This is where you're going to try out different looks for your character, for your own character. Okay, so this time I'm going to draw two eyes. I'm just going to draw two eyes, but this I'm, I'm going to go make them closer to each other so you can see the difference. Okay, so I'm just going to draw two dots, just like what we did, but much, much, much closer. And then I'm going to draw a small nose again. But even with just the same two dots that we created, they look different when they have enough space in the middle or when they're close together. And both of them are so cute. It's just a personal preference, you know, and then you can still create your cute tiny mouth like this. But this time I'm not going to, it's not so big. It's perfectly small. Um, it just matches the how tiny the nose is. And I'm not going to put a tooth but just like that. But they're all of them are so cute. All right. So that's what I would like for you to try sometimes is I really want you to try that exercise. And I want you to play around with the placement of your face, with the placement of um, your eyes, your nose, how big you want them to be or how small you want them to be, because it's all going to make a big difference. All right. So I'm going to draw my bunny inside my terrarium. I'm going to put the bunny onto the left side. I'll start with the head. Start with my half circle. All right. And I think this one is a little too small. When you're drawing kawaii, the head is almost as big as the whole body. I know it's weird, but trust me on this one. So I'm gonna make my head just slightly bigger than how I drew it, my first sketch. And this is why sketching is super important because you can always adjust your first idea. But sometimes your first idea is just as clever. But if you're not happy, change it. It's okay. All right. I'm going to add my ears. Just simple. It's not so flowy, but it's leaning over to my left. All right. So I'm going to add my eyes, just how I want it, two simple dots. If you're having a hard time finding the middle, do what I did in here where I added like a cross so I can find it. But how I'd like to do it is where I did the cheeks. Notice how where I did my cheeks, that's where my eyes are. It's not way up in here. It's not way down here. It's where the middle 
where we added the half circle and we started adding the cheeks. It's just right there. Okay. So I'm going to add my nose. Super simple. Super cute. It's 541. <laughs> Is it really that fast when you're having fun? We're going to finish this line art. Okay. So now I have my face for my body. This is how I'm gonna do my body so you can see right away. I'm gonna go start, it's almost like a diagonal, but it's going to be narrow by the neck and it goes down wider. So just like this. And again, remember the body is almost as large as your head. It, what's make, that is what makes it super kawaii. That's like that. Look, it's probably even smaller than the bot than the, the head. Look at this. That's my cute bunny. And I'm just gonna add the arms. I'm gonna add two like half circles down there. That's a cute kawaii bunny. He's so cute. Okay, I'm gonna do mine because we're running out of time. What? My goodness. Time flies when you're having fun and when you're creating. It's like, I can't believe that 40 minutes already has gone by. Okay, so I'm going to add my arms. Very, look at this, almost just following the same shape of the body. Okay. And this time, I think I want my arm, my other arm. So this would be the left arm of my bunny, where it's going to hold a flower. So in between your face and your body, somewhere there is a neck. <laughs> well, we don't see it, but somewhere it's there. So this is where we're going to put in our arm. And our arm is super tiny. Look at this, just like that. It'll make it super long and skinny because it's gonna look different. Um, so it's just short and stubby, just like that. And I'm gonna put in the two smiles at the bottom for its legs something simple okay i'm good i'm not super happy with its face i think the placement of my eyes is bothering me a little bit i'm gonna adjust that i will bring it down just a bit more like that that's much better i think <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop. And then we're going to do a mushroom right here. We'll add two, a very large one. But of course, we're not almost, I want you to, from your bottle, right? So we're going to create like an umbrella shape. So it's like an upside down U. But this time, we're going to create half of that shape because parts of it would be like hidden. So this is only what we're going to see. So almost like half of a mountain also, right? And then for this one, instead of a wide smile, it's going to go upside down. So it's not, don't make it too curvy like this. Don't make it too curvy like that. So if this is our mushroom, don't close it in like a smile. I want you to go up a little bit. So from here, want to go up just a little bit and just like that. Okay. So like this, so I'm going to do that. Okay. I think my first sketch was better, but you know what? It's okay. <laughs> and then we're going to add the body of the mushroom. So I'm not going to bring it all the way down. I'm not going to do that because we're going to add some bushes or some more leaves in here. So how are we going to do that? Scallop shapes. Remember, half circles, half circles. This time, I want you to have like a flow with your grass part. 
I don't want you to do one shape just like this. This time I want you to create one small one and then have a larger one, maybe a smaller one. So don't make it uniform, okay? So play around with the shape and the height and how wide you want it to be, your half circle or your scallop to be, all right? And we're gonna stretch it from the left side until the right side of our terrarium. So that's what I'm gonna do. So make sure you don't draw over your bunny like this, just like that. So that's our very first layer, okay? And then inside, I mean, behind the first mushroom that we created, this time we're going to add that smile. Remember earlier I said, don't make it a smile. This time we're going to. So from this end of the mushroom, we're going to bring it down, almost making a very wide smile and connect it to the side. Just like that. And then we're going to add some lines or the gills of the mushroom. And we're going to start in the middle part where that stalk of the mushroom is. And we're going to make like smiles and connect it to the other side, just like this. See, another one, the opposite direction, just like that. As long as you start from the middle part and create that little curved line. Right, then you can add some imperfect circles for your mushrooms. You wanna leave a space in the middle to add your kawaii face. Just like that. And then I'll add my smiley face in there. And then this time we're gonna add more to our foliage. So we're gonna add more fun leaves in here. Maybe I'll have one like taller so we can create layers of green. So this one is gonna be much taller. Look at this. Like that. And then in the front, I'm gonna do the same thing. Like that. Then we're gonna add a mushroom down here. So like a mushroom or a mountain, like what we did. And again, just slightly curving in the middle to add the body of that mushroom, like this. Maybe you can make this like a striped mushroom if you want, just like that. Now you can add some stars to make it even more like a magical night instead of a sun, like what I have in the example can add those. You can add like tiny leaves like this. Like that. Now in this kit, the reason why I have the six colors, those are very much <laughs> It was very hard to pick six colors. Let's just put it that way. But like what I said, if you're going to layer your greens, then you're going to need at least two colors in here, right? If you're not used to do a lot of blending and all that fun stuff, but I would love for you to try that. Now, this time, of course, it was not filled in. We weren't able to do our line art, but whatever, whichever line art, um, whichever marker you have, um, you can use that. Just be careful when you're doing your line art because sometimes it's what going to make your um, 
it's what's going to make your drawing or ruin the whole thing. So I want you to take your time when you're doing your line arts. Now, I feel like I want to add some clouds like what I have here in the sample that I created for the coloring page. You can do so by remember when we did when we did all the greeneries inside the terrarium, then you can do do the same thing. Just play around with the size of your scallop. I think that's what's going to give characters to your clouds instead of just, you know, the regular boring clouds can give them some characters like this. See? All right, now I want to, I'm gonna lighten this. I have nine minutes. You know what? We can color parts of this one. It's gonna be fun. I'm gonna stretch this. I know nine minutes, we got this. <laughs> now the gold faber pencils, they are buildable. In watercolor, when you're using watercolor, there's called, or um, acrylic coloring or painting, it's called an underpainting. So with watercolor, there's an underpainting, which is a wash color first. So you basically just add a first layer of color. And when that color dries, then you add another layer. Now with color pencils, you don't have to wait for it to dry, right? But if you want to build up your colors, then you want to make sure that you're not pressing on too much product into your paper. So you want to start and color it light. So and I'm also, notice how I'm holding my pencil. It's not straight up like this. I'm holding it almost 45 degree angle. And pay attention to the pressure you're using when you are coloring. Look at this. I'm just going very light and I'm letting the pencil do its job. Trying to be careful around those areas that I want to leave white. Like this, All right? Now I'm gonna use the brown for the other parts of the mushroom and even inside the gills, but I'm gonna go light. Remember, go light. And this is how we're gonna build our colors and how we're also going to blend and create some shadows and depth. Even we have limited colors of six. Okay, so I'm just going to do that light, 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 light. Now I'm going to start with yellow. Now, when you're coloring um, a garden or an enchanted forest like this, what happens is that everything in front of you is much bigger. So when you're looking at that um, in the drawing, you, everything that's closer to you appears to be lighter. And then everything in the dark is pushed in the back so it can you can make it look like that's darker. And so everything that's in front of you closer to the viewer, then that's lighter. So I'm gonna use all my yellows, but very lightly, the same 107 in here. And I'm just gonna color in all the parts that are going to be green. I know I said green, that's correct, but we're gonna add yellow first. So I'm just gonna color it in everything. All the background, it's gonna be yellow again, be very mindful of how much pressure you are using when you are coloring the first layer, okay? So I'm just gonna color it in yellow, all of it, except for the mushrooms. We're gonna keep that. We're gonna color it red as well. Sorry, I have my yellows. Now I'm gonna do my red. Why does time so fast? Oops. Also notice how I'm holding and where I'm holding my pencil. I'm not close to here. Because when I hold my pencil close to the tip, what happens is naturally I write and I write and color very heavy. So with this one, I feel like I have more control of my pressure. I can go much lighter. If I hold my pencil closer to the tip, I feel like I am just naturally doing it heavy already. So this time. Just holding it like that. All right now the background, I want that to be blue. So I'm gonna use my blue, which is the 143, but again, we're gonna color it really light. 
yes, you can erase the colored pencils as long as it's not like super dark in there. All right. Notice how I'm coloring it also. I'm coloring it so imperfectly. Like I'm almost like intentionally going all over the place. As long as I stay within the lines almost. <laughs> some parts of it are outside. It's okay. I have some blue over there in my bunny too. So I'm okay. That's okay. Now we're going to build the colors. <clears throat> I know because it doesn't look much right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to start around my white negative area, the parts that I want it to be white. So I'm just going to trace over those. Notice how I'm holding it. I'm closing it. I'm holding it close to the tip now. Right? All right. So now we can build our layers and our colors. Now I want to make this part right here slightly darker to the bottom of my mushroom. And I want it to go light as I go up. So how do you do that? Just apply more pressure here at the bottom. And then we're gonna keep getting lighter and lighter as we go move up. So can you, re can, can you already tell the difference? Because this one, I was really packing in the colors. like that. And then I go lighter, pay attention to my pressure and go light going up. So this is where our natural highlights is on top. Now I want to here connect my mushroom. I'm going to add like a dark layer of this brown. It's the same brown that we used though. But because I am applying pressure, it appears to be darker, even though, however, we're just using the same color. And again, same with our mushroom. I'm going to go lighter as I approach and go down right here. Now, it's just going to take a while if you're using like a very textured type of paper, which I am right now. I'm using a watercolor paper. So imagine this paper has like little tiny bumps and valleys. So that's why I have to go be patient with my pencil to get into those little tiny cracks or little valleys of my paper. You can also see some white texture of the paper. And that's what I love too, because it creates a more um, a natural highlight. Now I'm gonna go over here in the middle, just add a little bit of that, of that brown. I'm gonna use the yellow this time to create almost like a highlight down here on top of the brown that we created. I'm not applying too much pressure, just enough to really pack down and add some layer of this color, just like that. Now we're gonna start adding some greens. I am going to use the 167, which is a dark green. And I really wanna go color everything on the back, the dark green. So I'm just gonna follow my sketch and add an outline like this. And even for this one where it connects, I'm just gonna add that. So I know where it stops, where it ends. Just gonna add this. Now, if you're going to continue working on this project and if you know, you have a social media, I would love to see the final outcome of your coloring. I would really love to see it. So if you can tag me on social media, it brings me so much joy seeing your projects. I would love to see it. Like that. Now I'm going to add and use the same green to draw the bushes that I created or those little tiny leaves. 
And this is where it's going to help if you have a pointy tip. So always have, always have a sharpener so you can always sharpen and give you like a pointy tip. I just want to show you how to layer your green. So now this time I'm going to use the 170. I know it's six o'clock. We're almost done, but I just want to layer it so you guys can see. I'm going to go really light like this, especially in between the bunny's legs. So because it's going to cast a shadow, so we want to be mindful of that. Like this. And I'm going to use a dark green again to draw those little tiny leaves we created. Having different colors of greens or layers, it really does give you that visual that, hey, I have layers and layers in here. So you have like a, a forest in here, right? And then yellow and blue, what does it make? You make green color. So I'm going to add a yellow in here again, like that. You want to start building and creating a different type of green. You can blend the yellow and blue together. Like that. So that will give you a different result. You can add another layer as long as you don't pack it pack enough products because then that's where it's going to be really difficult to blend because the colors are, the products are already packed into the paper and to those hills and valleys. But if you go light enough, you'll have enough time to just kind of layer and move things around and blend your own colors. But you get like a different result like that. You can use the same color for your outline if you want. Create this. We're going to go color it in red. See how vibrant it is, the colors are? So it is up to you. If you want it lighter, then just go apply very light pressure. If you want it really dark, then pack in all the products in there. And you get this vibrant, super saturated colors. Like that. You can use the same red for the mushroom, or you can just use a black marker to outline everything too. But it's nice when you see tone on tone like this. But for the tiny details, it's probably a good idea to just use a black line. I personally love using like black liner to outline everything. You can use your Pit Artist pen on top of these Gold Faber pencils to create like kawaii faces like this. <laughs> so it's kind of weird, huh? When you don't see the outline and it's just coloring, but it really does give a much more, I think personally, I think it's more like um, ch children's coloring or a children's book, really. So I'm gonna use me out my black liner in here just so you can see what we created before I leave. But do you guys have any questions before I leave you? Next week, same time, Wednesday, we're going to be learning about bounds lettering. Now that class is going to be a little difficult um, for beginners, but we all start somewhere, right? So. If you're someone who struggles writing script, um, this is a good class because honestly, when I was first learning how to do calligraphy, that's why I don't bake because it's I'm having such a hard time to follow direction. <laughs> so, um, and that is the honest truth. That's why baking is not my forte. I love to cook because I treat my cooking just like how I do my music and how I do my art. I really like to play around and experiment a lot. And so um, balanced lettering is just that. 
It's um, breaking the rules of traditional calligraphy. So that's what we're going to learn next week. Same time, Wednesday, five o'clock central standard time. And then the week after that, we're going to look at the other kit. We're going to be doing some galaxy lettering, some brush lettering using the galaxy kit from Faber-Castell USA. So I hope you guys had fun in this class. I know we really didn't finish our drawing, but this is something that you can finish at home. I really wanted to show you the step-by-step. -step. We could have just done it using the handout, but you know, seeing it a step-by-step -step like that is always super helpful. At least to me, I, you know, I really like that when I can see the step-by-step, -step, especially the, the, when we did the bunny, you know, we experimented drawing different type of ears and different type of faces and how it really does change your drawing completely. So yeah, thank you guys so much. I am super thrilled that you are here. You're always, you know, so, so inspiring to me because if not for you, I don't know how I will come up with all these classes, but you guys make it so fun every week. My name is Lay Bella Rawson. I'm also known as Mommy Lay on the internet. Um, in behalf of Faber Castell USA, we thank everybody in Michael stores. Thank you all so much for being creative with us until next week, guys, same time. I'll see you soon. Stay creative and stay happy. Thank you, everybody.